Something that scares me almost more than anything else is the temptation to let complacency glow, particularly now that I'm settling into the mundanities of life. A job and bills and a schedule that's starting to have a lot less variety. The rhythm of life, the pattern that I've begun to establish is already starting to lull me into this robot-like stupor that as a child I used to observe on the faces of adults that I pitied. Long since. Over the past year or so, something I've encountered again and again is this charge to keep that childlike sense of wonder alive. There's a commencement address by David Foster Wallace that you really need to read. Um, I'll put a link to it in the description. Please read it all, but for the sake of our internet attention spans, I'm just going to read the beginning and the end. There are these two young fish swimming along, and they happen to meet an older fish swimming the other way, who nods at them and says, Morning, boys, how's the water? The two young fish swim on for a bit, and then eventually one of them looks over at the other and goes, what the heck is water? And now the end of his address. It's about the real value of a real education, which has almost nothing to do with knowledge and everything to do with a simple awareness. Awareness of what is so real and essential, so hidden in plain sight all around us all the time, that we have to keep reminding ourselves over and over, this is water. This is water. Prepare your eye holes for a massive roll as I say this next cliche, but life is a miraculous gift. And it doesn't cease to become miraculous just because we've grown accustomed to it. As we encounter difficulties and disappointments and tragedies, our cynicism will rise. And the little things that used to bring us so much joy so easily become coping mechanisms. Something I just have to ask you, where is your foundation? Where do you find your stability in a world that is going to let you down. John Piper, a hero of mine, wrote this about C.S. Lewis, a bigger hero of mine. The context is a discussion about how C.S. Lewis was always searching for pure joy, how it was ultimately fulfilled in God, and how that spilled out into his everyday life. Lewis gave me, and continues to give me, an intense sense of the astonishing realness of things. He had the ability to see and feel what most of us see and do not see. He had what Alan Jacobs called an omnivorous attentiveness. I love that phrase. What this has done for me is hard to communicate. To wake up in the morning and to be aware of the firmness of the mattress, the warmth of the sun's rays, the sound of the clock ticking, the coldness of the wooden floor, the wetness of the water in the sink, the sheer being of things, quiddity as he called it. And not just to be aware, but to wonder, to be amazed that the water is wet. It did not have to be wet. If there was no such thing as water and one day someone showed it to you, you would simply be astonished. If none of that makes you excited about life all over again, watch Life is Weird by Zay Frank, and if not that, just watch Everything by Zay Frank, because he's constantly changing my perspectives on things. And, yeah, that's what's been on my mind. As always, I am unsure how to wrap this up. It feels like last year all over again. Anyway, I can't wait to hear what you guys think. Talk to you soon. Picky people pick Peter Pan, peanut butter is picky peanut butter, picky people pick, you know you need unique New York, unique New York, you know you need, you know you need, unique New York, unique New York, ah, I can't do this.